I'm Lynn and welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. Today we're going to talk about feeding sheep and for those of you who watch every day this is probably going to be a massive repeat because I feel like I talk about this constantly but I forget that there are new viewers joining every day and until they go and do the binge watching of all my videos and see how we do it, um, I see that the questions revolve heavily around how we feed our sheep, best ways to feed sheep, how to feed the creep feed and stuff like that. So I'm gonna try focus on that today. Um, and it's our opinion, it's how we do it, what we find is working for us after years of experimentation. But it, yeah, it's not for everyone. The, it, this will gear mainly to people who are feeding hay and grain or one or the other. But it's not for people feeding TMR because we don't feed TMR here. So over the years, basically this is the feed system we have ended up developing. We built them ourselves. They are made of steel, sheet metal, uh, with some wooden slats at the top on these ones because um, when we made them, we found that some sheep would jump into the feeder. So we added the wooden slats on top just to stop people from jumping in, especially during breeding season is when we were having the problems. Um, so if we were breeding the, uh, making them from scratch, we probably would have done the metal, the metal higher, but this is the design anyway. We have a sheet metal um, trough here and it is, I believe it's four and a half feet wide and they're in sections here. Some are eight foot sections, some are 10 foot sections. So these feeders can be taken apart, moved, reassembled if you want to. We feed them in a central alleyway so that they can be fed on both sides. Each um, feeder has a little lip around the edge so that when we pour their grain in, it doesn't fall out. All the bars are on slants. We find the slants. Uh, it's not a huge angle there, but it's enough of an angle that the lambs don't jump in as easily. They can still get in because I don't think there is a feeder where a lamb can't get in, but they are extremely limited as to how, how many get in, like very few get in. And also the slant stops the hay from falling out as well. It just adds that little catch to it. And each sheep sticks their head in and basically once their head is in and they're eating, they stay put. So people always ask, do we have a lot of wastage? And the answer is no. Our sheep, we have Dorsets and Suffolks and basically they get their head in, they have their fill and the only time they move out of their spot is when they've eaten all the food in that area and then they'll move on down the line type thing. So. We find it very handy. We're using round bales. So Arnie puts them in at the end of the feeder here at the front and he rolls the bale out to the back. And that's how we feed our sheep. All the adults. I have another version of that exact same feeder here, except this one is for small square bales. And this is where we have our lambing jugs set up. If we had lambing jugs and we have our family groups on this side. So it's the same idea though. It's the slanted bars, it's the little lip on the side to keep grain in, and um, sheep can eat from both sides. We have a smaller, we use the smaller one here instead of the wider one because we have less space because of all the jugs and stuff being set up and we don't want to sacrifice sheep comfort. So that's why we don't have the wider troughs like this over here. But if we did have the space, we would definitely use the wider ones here as well because it is way easier 
for handling to roll out a bale than have to bring in a bunch of little square bales and crack them open. But these make really great creep feeders. And we'll go into the other barn and look at the creep feeders to explain why we don't like the creep feeders we use now. Before I go over to the coveralls, here's the other barn where we've modified an existing bunk feeder uh, with the same type of bars here. And the sheep are all eating. The difference with, with this feeder is that it was an existing feeder with the cows. So um, here there's a cement block that goes right to the ground. Whereas in the feeders over here, they serve dual purpose because these feeders are up on kind of like legs. I believe they're 25 inches tall. And underneath, I'll go over, look at this one. You can see there's gaps underneath, like there's a space underneath, that's a board which we have going, running down the center of the bottom of the feeders. So that if you have lambs, you can have lambs on either side and they can't get through to the other side. And they can also lay under there for warmth and comfort. And also when you're feeding the ewes grain, that what happens is the ewes tend to run to the trough and we used to have them trampling lambs when they were in a bunk feeder like that where the lambs had no escape route the ewes would run in and trample lambs and lambs would get injured now if there's a lamb standing here and the ewes run in to the, get their feed the lambs can quickly deke under the feeder and we've had uh, i don't knock on wood this year i don't think we've had any broken legs on on lambs except we had one in a jog but not out in the open family groups. So it really is a good thing to have that under the feeder escape way. <laughs> These are the feeders we use in the barns when we have sheep inside eating. But we do have rams who stay outside all year and they're eating at round bale feeders. These are ones we also designed ourselves we had the bought Marweld ones, but we again prefer these ones. And the, the thing about these feeders, um, the rams have bigger heads. So these bars are straight down, not on an angle, because the rams tend to be pushier at the feeder and you could get lamb, rams injured as they pushed each other on the on the slanted bars so the bar spacing is wider for our rams and it's up and down instead of um, on an angle and the we feed we're feeding round bales in these feeders for them as well but we don't roll them out because we want them under cover so they they've got a, a roof over top of them to keep them dry and stop them from getting mucky and the only thing I can say about these feeders is um, no matter what type of single round bale feeder you have, you should always place it in the feeder on its flat, not on the round, because when it's on its flat, that hay just, pe that hay just peels off really easily so the sheep can eat it way better. They don't have to struggle and fight with it to get the hay out, whereas on the round, you, they really, really have to struggle with it. And as a result, a lot of the sheep won't get enough food because they'll finally give up. And the purpose of having sheep is for them to grow and obviously stay healthy. And they're not growing if they're not eating. So you want to make food easily accessible to your sheep, whether they be lambs or rams. Um, because, yeah, that's the whole point. Hi, sweetheart. I got this little guy here with me what, the whole time wagging his tail. Hi, buddy. You are a little angel, aren't you? Not that you're little, but you are an angel with that waggy tail. Yeah, you got a waggy tail. Do you have a waggy tail? Show that waggy tail again. Do you have a waggy tail? Come on. Oh, you're a silly boy. 
before I go to the coveralls, I just wanted to show you the little littler feeders. At the end of them, we do have the the end piece. It does move up and down, so we can lock it up when there's hay in there. Uh, and you can walk into the feeder if you want to feed the sheep. There's room to do that. So we roll a bale of hay out into the feeder. And then with a pail of grain, we walk down the edges and feed the grain. It doesn't spill out onto the ground because we have those lips along the side of the feeder. And that's how we feed uh, hay and grain to the adult sheep. Those are the creep feeders we have. So... On this side of the creep pen, the lambs are able to eat off the main feeder. So they eat the grain there and they eat the hay there. And these feeders are perfect for feeding creep, grain, lambs, ewes, doesn't matter what. These walk through feeders that we purchased. We purchased them when we got into sheep, so we've had them a long time. If we were to do it again, we would not have purchased them. They're very expensive, and they're great for feeding the grain like that, but you can buy a much cheaper trough to feed grain than those. But we thought they were a good idea because you could walk in them to put in the hay. Well, to be honest, you never walk in them. So that's irrelevant. And then uh, the feed trough is handy for sure. But the hay part of it is not good at all. And I see a lot of people themselves build this type of hay feeder for their sheep. And you can see the spacing in the bars is, I'm guessing, two inches. So it's good because they can't get stuck in it like their heads. But it's bad because you can see how they try to pull hay out of it. See, they'll try to pull, they'll try to get their little nose in there and try to pull. And if I use all my muscles, it's really hard to pull that hay out. So it's very difficult for them to eat through those holes, which is counterproductive. You want them to be able to stick their head in like that and eat the hay very easily with their head in there. They have to fight for it to pull it out just like those round bales, if you put them on their rounds, they have to fight to pull the hay out. Um, you'll have a lot of them give up or they won't eat as much hay as they should. Uh, they just won't be eating properly. So what they do in these troughs, right now they're all eating grain, so no one's eating hay, so I can show you. But inevitably, when we fill up these feeders with hay, the lambs stand in the trough at the bottom and eat over top. So if ever you see a sheep or a lamb eating over top of your hay feeder instead of through your hay feeder, you probably have a poorly designed hay feeder. Because they're eating over top, because guess what? When he stands here and eats over top, there's all the hay. Loose, easy to eat, and he's going to eat it no-brainer. It's simple. It's right there for him. It's right on his plate. If you have to pull at it. See? I can't barely get it out. It's ridiculous. If you have to fight for your hay or fight for your grain because they sell little um, creep feeders with little tiny holes where they each little lamb can put uh, their mouth in but the rest have to wait in line. Well, the ones that are waiting in line walk away. They may come back later, but initially they walk away. So again, if it's free like this, they can all come, they can all eat all the time. There's no fighting for the food. It's there on their plate. You don't want sheep to have to fight for their food if you want them to grow to their potential. The big ones will probably do okay because they're they're the you know motivated ones. They're gonna they're gonna put in the effort to fight for it. But the majority of sheep will not. They'll walk away, and 
that's why you'll have poor, uh, poor performing sheep, why they don't grow as well. It's a common question when people come here to visit. How do you get your sheep so big? What are you feeding them? Well, for those of you who watch our channel regularly, you should know by now we don't do anything special with them. There's no magical formula for our grain. It's a 16% uh, grain ration that we grow on our own farm. There's no um, secret ingredients that we add. We don't add, uh, we're not making the ration any higher than what is recommended by any feed dealer. And we feed straight hay, but we feed it free choice and we don't believe in empty troughs. So the point sheep are grazers, which means that they are eating constantly all day long. And grazers mean that they are, their diet is basically grass. Hay is grass. So you want that to be available all the time. And people say that if you leave it out all the time, they're just going to gorge out and get fat. Well, they don't. If it's there all the time, there's no panic for it. Um, it's like a buffet. They know they can go up to the table anytime to eat, so there's no rush. So they'll eat till they're full. They'll go sit down. They'll chew their cud. When they get hungry again, they'll go back and get more. That's what they do in the pastures too. As they walk through the fields, they'll eat. When they've had their fill, they stop, they chew their cud, and then they go back when they're hungry again. If you let your feeders go empty and feed them at certain times of the day, then it's a mad rush um, because they haven't they, they don't have a nice balance on their feeding, like they, they, they're going full and they're going empty. So they'll run for the feeder, they'll eat as much as they possibly can, and that's when you're going to get bloating, gorging, choking, and all that kind of stuff. So they're not really eating anymore to leave it out all the time, because they only eat what they can eat. If you feed it at just specific times of the day, then they're probably going to eat more because they know if I don't eat it now, I don't have any for later. So that that's what we recommend anyway. And I, I assume that's why we have good luck growing the sheep and why they look uh, the way they do because they're growing to their potential. Hi, big guy. You look like you're at your potential. You're very pretty. In this barn, it's all lambs now. The adults are removed, so we don't need to use those creep feeders anymore. They're eating off the central trough here. So you can see how Arnie just pours it down the line. And there you can see the little lip so that the pieces of grain don't fall out of the feeder. And they can still eat their hay too. Sometimes in the middle, especially with the lambs, they can't reach the middle pieces. Generally when they eat the outsides, it pulls the inside over to them as well. But every now and then you'll have to go and kick it into them but it's not a big deal. We don't feed creep feed free choice. We feed enough that there is creep in the trough until the last feeding of the day. So he'll pour it out twice a day to keep it fresh because you want it eaten up. But again, you want them to be grazing at it all day long. So by trial and error, you can figure out how much you need to pour out for it to last quite a while. Someone asked me to show the difference between the legs on a Suffolk and a Dorset. I assume they're wanting to see how the fluffiness as opposed to the bare legs can make it more or less obvious that they've got bad legs. Um, 
the fluffier the legs, the harder it is to tell. So Suffolk don't have fluffy legs, so it's easy to see the position of their legs. Dorsets, if they've got the fluff growing here, if, the, if it's really pulled out, now he's got poop on his, but if it's really pulled out, it might look like he's bowing in a little bit. So you want to know, if I took that wool off, is it nice and straight? So that's all I was talking about with that. And same with the front legs. The, uh, right now they're all eating, so I can't show it on the front legs, but front legs seems to be even more obvious um, that the dors with the dor dorset fluffy legs. But that's all I was talking about. Yeah, I have to look more carefully to s and if I'm not sure if it's fluff or if it's the bone that's bent over, I will go and feel it the way I did with that one. So as you can see, he just takes a bale and ro rolls it like, for this bale, he would put it where Katie is at the front of the feeder, roll it to the end, and then he rolls it back. Sometimes he leaves it at the end and we'll roll it back in the evening, but this time he rolled it halfway. Well, I hope that gives you a little idea of how we're feeding our sheep here. Everyone does it a little bit differently, but those are our opinions on the matter and what we do on our farm. I hope uh, maybe you learned something, whether you like it or not. And I hope you also enjoyed your time at Utopia Farms. And if you did, please give us a like or subscribe, send us a comment, and please join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.